So, I'm going to read you guys a story. But, uh, it is not going to be the, the happiest story there is. In fact, actually, if death is not a comfortable subject for you, then this is not the video for you, unfortunately. I, I hate to say that, but this is not going to be a light subject. We'll get our little bit of serotonin in first before we talk about it. So first we have from Orion the God Slayer. Uh, we have some of this. Uh, they're listening to the stream. The stuff on the border is insert in the video tagline here. In your Conling Vera. So that's neat. It's a very neat little icon. And then we have the next one from uh, Sky Lily two 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 zero. So my first time doing fan art for a YouTuber. If you show this, I do not expect you to read the cursed words that are written everywhere around here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is adorable. This looks like a take on the beach, uh, the beach version of the character. With that said, though, as always, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you would like your fan art to be featured in a video going forward, the best way to do so is dropping it into the fan art section of said Discord. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and read... The story of, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this correctly, and I'm sorry, Savita Halapa Navar. I'm hoping I'm saying that right, but I'm not. And this is basically, uh, imagine a world without abortion. And you have a lot of Savitas, but let's, let's read. So, Savita, a dentist and her husband, Praveen, an engineer, who are both working in Co Galway at the time of her tragic death in October of 2012. Shortly after her death, Praveen, who was 34 at the time, recounted to the Irish Times his wife's final days. After Savita presented at Galway University Hospital in severe pain, a doctor examined her and told the couple that the cervix is fully dilated, amniotic fluid is leaking, and unfortunately, the baby won't survive. The doctor, according to Praveen, said it would be over in a few hours, but the fetal heartbeat continued for three more days. That is the part to consider. The fetal heartbeat. That is very important because that is the mechanism by which Texas currently is arguing that you cannot abort at all. When the consultant came on the ward rounds on Monday morning, Savita asked if they could not save the baby. Could they induce and end the pregnancy. The consultant said that as long as there's a fetal heartbeat, we can't do anything. Again, on Tuesday morning, the ward rounds and the same discussion. The consultant said it's the law. It's a Catholic country. And Savita, who was a Hindu, said, I am neither Irish nor Catholic. But they said there's nothing they can do. This is a very important part. If you are anti-abortion, uh, pro-forced birth, and you're doing it for religious reasons, I don't share your religion. I don't fucking care about your religion. And I really don't care about it when you weaponize it against me. Like, if, if you want to make someone have a resentment for your faith, this is how you do it. This is exactly how you cause that resentment and hurt people. That evening, she developed shakes and shivering, and she was vomiting. She went to use the toilet, and she collapsed. There were big alarms, and a doctor took blood and started on her or started her on antibiotics. The next morning, I said she was so sick and asked again if they could just end it, but they said they couldn't. A few hours later, the fetal, heart beast the fetal heartbeat ceased, and Savita was taken into an operating room where her womb's contents were removed. 
When she came out, she was talking all right, but she was very sick. And that was the last time that Praveen was able to speak with her. At 11 p.m. that night, Praveen received a call from the hospital. They said they were shifting her to intensive care. Her heart and pulse were low. Her temperature was high. She was sedated and critical, but stable. She stayed, stayed stable on Friday, but by 7 p.m. on Saturday, they said her heart, kidneys, and liver were not functioning. She was critically ill, and that night, they lost her. Savita died on October 28th, 2012. Praveen took Savita's body home to their native India on November 1st, and she was cremated and laid to rest. A post-mortem post found that the cause of her death was fulmantic septic or full fu blah, 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 fulmanic septic shock from E. coli bacteria. Ascending genital tract sepsis. The miscarriage at 17 weeks gestation was associated with, I'm going to say this incorrectly, choreo and the anitis. Savita's death was one of the catalyzing forces that led to the repeal of Ireland's Eighth Amendment, which acknowledged the right to life of the unborn, with due regard to the equal right of the mother, guaranteed in its laws to respect, and as far as practicable, by its laws to defend and vindicate that right. In May 2018, as Ireland prepared to head to the polls for a referendum on abortion, Savita's parents gave permission for their late daughter's image to be used as part of the Together for Yes campaign, which sought to repeal Ireland's Eighth Amendment. In a video for Together for Yes, Savita's father said that I hope the people in Ireland will remember the fate of our daughter Savita on the day of the referendum and vote yes. So that's what happened. So that what happened to us won't happen to other families. Remember, if you are pro-life, you're not. You're, you're not. You think you are, but you're not. Somebody has lied to you and convinced you that that is what your position is called. But you are not. You are pro-forced birth. The quality, chance, uh, chances, and likelihood of the mother's life do not matter to you. They do not factor into your conundrum. You think they do, but they do not. Because in all functionality, when you argue against the rights of a woman to her own body, you are arguing against her own rights. You think the rights of the woman are what you care about. They are not. Zone, thank you very much for the follow said, on May 25th, 2018, the Republic of Ireland voted 66 to 33% per, uh, in favor of repealing the Eighth Amendment. In September 2018, the Health Regulation of Termination of Pregnancy Bill was initiated in the Irish government, seeking to legalize abortion in the country for the first time for non-life-threatening reasons. Now remember... Anytime that somebody says, oh, but if it's a life-threatening issue, then we can go ahead and we'll, we'll do the abortion. I don't know how many fucking times I have heard that. Where somebody goes, oh, no, if it's a life-threatening situation, then of course you'll be able to get abortion. No, the fuck you won't. We literally have examples of people who died because they were not able to get an abortion because it was not considered life-threatening until it was determined that the thing that, that killed them was the lack of the abortion. Post-mortem. Anybody tells you, oh no, in, a, in, the, in the case that, you know, in the case where the, the mother's life is threatened, of course they'll perform the abortion. Let them know they're a fucking liar. Let them know that they are wrong. Let them know that that is not what happens functionally. You're not pro-life, you're pro-forced birth. You are not pro-life, you are pro-control. And yes, I'm speaking directly to whoever it is in the audience who cannot get it through their thick skulls. I see you guys in the comments section. I laugh at your terrible arguments. 
So go ahead, throw them in there. I will gladly enjoy the engagement from the YouTube algorithm because you're too busy with your pissing contest down in a place that functionally doesn't matter. According to the Department of Health, the new legislation was written after the referendum and it permits the termination to be carried out in cases where the risk of life or serious harm or health of pregnant women, including in a pregnancy where there is a condition present, which is likely to lead to the deaths of the fetus either before or within 28 days of birth or without restriction up to 12 weeks of pregnancy. The expanded service for termination of pregnancy under the Act of 2018 was introduced on January 1st, 2019. Now, 12 weeks is not a lot of time, but it's better than Texas's six weeks. But I want you to imagine a world where abortion is completely restricted. It is a world where you will have more Savitas. It is a world where you will have more living, breathing, functioning people who will die, either because they had to seek out an abortion in less than safe means, or because they were denied an abortion that was actually life-threatening, but current data said that it wouldn't be, until they were already dead. If you wanted a needle out of your body, you would pull it out. If you had a parasite in your body, you would pull it out. And if you have a child in your body, you should have the ability to pull it out. If you do not consent any longer to having a thing or a living being inside of you, you should be allowed to remove it. It is your body, not theirs. The fact that they require your body doesn't matter. You may think it does, but if somebody required your body for an operation right now, you should not be legally compelled to giving it. Even if they were in a situation where you were the cause of the problem that led to them requiring the usage of your body, you should not be legally compelled to give it. Likewise, when it is an unborn fetus, even if you grant personhood completely, fully, and wholeheartedly, If I do not consent, if you do not consent to it being in your body any longer, you should not be forced to keep it in your body. If you do not consent to your body being used for anything, be it an experiment, be it an invasion, be it literally anything, from that point on, you should be able to terminate whatever arrangement leads to your body being used. This includes a fetus. You can consent to whether or not somebody can use your used corpse for medical experimentation and organ donation. You have control over that as a corpse, but when a living being is inside you, whether or not you grant personhood in your particular philosophical perspective of which I do not give a shit about, somehow magically you have fewer rights then. A couple of years ago, all of the conversations that were had about abortion were had as hypotheticals. These were things that we didn't really think were going to be going away. We accepted that Roe v. Wade was a, was a stickler in the American zeitgeist. And this was not a fight for human rights that we would be having to do ever again. But yet, here we are, having to do it all over again. And three years ago, when I said this wouldn't happen, I was fucking wrong. I had rosy-eyed glasses on, thinking that it can't happen here. And then it did. So. What do you think in the comment section? Do you want to go down there and screech that I'm a baby murderer to somebody who really can't give a shit less? Do you want to go down there and give your perspective on situations like this? Do you want to hop down into that section and have a conversation over what can be done and what measures you might be taking to make sure that 
your local legislation knows how you feel about these various heartbeat bills that are being pushed in multiple states and succeeded in Texas. Let me know. Because this is not a fun situation, nor is it a pleasant experience. With all that said, though, if you want to support the channel and what I do, check the description down below. There are links to Patreon, Ko-fi, literally anything. Any way you could support the channel, there's a way to do it down there. If you enjoyed the video, hit a like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow over on Twitch where you can see this stuff get talked about live. And you can be there in the live chat to discuss as conversations are happening about this stuff. We also play video games and other stuff over there. But that is up to you if that is your particular method of enjoyment. With that said, as always, everyone, insert into video tagline here. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. If you want access to behind the scenes content for the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon. I do weekly vlogs over there where I give uh, real life updates to what's going on behind the scenes on the channel, stuff that you don't really get uh, over here and, and even on Twitch. Uh, Patreon also helps the channel's stability a whole lot. Without Patreon, I wouldn't be able to do this at all. Especially with the kind of content that I do, neither YouTube nor Twitch are the most stable sources of income. If you are a $20 and up patron, then you will be featured on the ending slides as shown in the beginning of the end credits. If you want to catch the streams where all this content comes from, then consider heading over to Twitch and following. And if you want to continue watching over here on YouTube, maybe consider clicking one of the end screen videos. And once again, I want to thank you so much for spending your time with me over on my channel. I wouldn't be able to do literally anything that I'm doing over here on YouTube without each and every one of you. So thank you.